We're back now with psychological illusionist Jaron Brown, whose Netflix special, The Push, questions how easily we can be manipulated and how far you could push somebody to go. We decided to put some of our unsuspected audience members to the test this morning. Darren calls this the bell test. Let's see how our audience did. Abracadabra, Alakazam. <laughs> ABC's new show, Deception, features good old-fashioned magic. Ta. Yeah. This is decidedly not the magic of J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, and Hermione Granger. It's Leviosa. Your plane did not explode. It disappeared. Now, Deception is all about where magic meets the real world. That's how you make a plane disappear. The diamond heists, bank robberies, and organized crime. Magic mashed up with the classic police procedure. Who is that? Magician impossible. going to be inconvenient for the stand, so we'll see. And up. Excellent. So now we're going to remove the three actors, leaving us with a line of these four ladies who have been given no instruction to stand or sit down with the bell. And we'll see if they're still now doing it on their own. There you go. <laughs> the woman at the end not happy. Just pure social compliance. Can't it just keep going like this, really? <laughs> she has rebelled. She has rebelled. <laughs> She's <laughs> stood up against the system. Good for her. So why? Why did they stand and sit? Why? I think our fear of not fitting in is, uh, is just such a big part of life. There's a great experiment where you, you can have the, the plants in the room give very obviously a wrong answer, and then the one real person will join in with the wrong answer, even though it's blatantly wrong, just so, because you want to fit in, which is essentially, essentially what this is. And to ask one person to stand up and mm -hmm. separate from the group to stop it, is extra hard, even though it may, may be a very good person, because you're asking them, in a group of strangers, to behave differently than the group. Yes, yeah, so to stand up. We, we've done an experiment before with smoke coming in under a door, and again, and everybody's in on it apart from one person. And will that one person stand up and try and stop, you know, say, look, there's an emergency, there's clearly a fire, if no one does anything, and people don't, they, they don't do it. I think the answer is to develop a kind of, um, a sort of a hero mentality that's just something that we, need to have in the back of our minds so we're kind of aware that this goes on that's all it is it's why it's why i do shows like this just to have a, a knowledge that this is the norm this is how things generally are and to have that little thing at the back of your mind where you've sort of mentally rehearsed the idea of stepping up to it mm -hmm. so that when it does happen it isn't so scary and you kind of know okay this is this is the thing to do
The magic in this case conjured by Cameron Black, played by actor Jack Cutmore Scott. The perfect frame in which to view an illusion. You might recognize him from the 2014 movie Kingsman, where he played Rufus Saville, one of the toffs who washes out of the Kingsman's boot camp. Are you Oxford or Cambridge? Does anyone have a knife? In Deception, his character is debonair and slightly dubious. Do it again. Cameron Black is a world-renowned illusionist. He starts working with the FBI to help them solve crimes that are committed by people using a similar skill set to the illusionists. It's a skill set Cutmore Scott has had to learn. He went to Harvard, not Hogwarts. Is magic something you've always been good at? No, by no stretch. And now you're like Harry Potter. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, yeah, without the one. I don't like magic. Okay. His co-star is Ilfanesh Hadera. Her character is more of a skeptic. I couldn't have done without my beautiful assistant. Don't ever say that again. Um, and, and similar in some ways to the Now You See Me movies. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's no accident. The show's magic consultant, the magician behind the magician, as it were, also consulted on the first Now You See Me movie. Now you don't. Magician David Kwong. You have one of the more unusual careers of, of anyone that I've met. I couldn't have planned it. <laughs> you do magic. Mm -hmm. You're a performer of magic. Yeah. You consult on films and movies like this. And you do crossword puzzles. I'm also a puzzler, yeah. I, I construct puzzles for the New York Times. Uh, I find there's this intersection between magic and puzzles. Kwong is also a recent Harvard graduate. Should be able to get them both to come right. Wow! And he's very good at this. So did you think when you got into this that you'd be able to make a living doing magic? Oh, never in a million years. And uh, my parents felt the same way. <laughs> uh, they're relieved now. Yeah. <laughs> now, you studied the history of magic. I, yes, I was a history major, and uh, my professors let me concentrate everything on Houdini and Thurston and Keller and the great magicians from the Golden Age. This is the workshop. The set yes. reflects that history. This is a fun piece here. Um, this is a, this is a, a little a miniature automaton. Full of gadgets and memorabilia from the Golden Age of magic. Three. Ah. Well, so here's a question. Yes. All of the magic you do on the show is legit illusion, right? Yes. Do magicians get pissed off at you for revealing? No, we're very, very careful about not exposing trade secrets. But for things that are 100 years old that nobody's performing, we can, we can pull back the curtain a little bit on that. So You're not stealing somebody else's that's right. thunder. Exactly. Deception creates its own thunder. Now, is there enough magic to sustain a show like this? Oh, absolutely. It's amazing because magic isn't only magic tricks, but how do our characters feel about that? How, does this, how do these deceptions also kind of impact the characters in the story? What's the emotional angle? An enigma that unfolds Sundays right here on ABC. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Brooklyn.